So last time I mentioned that we could do some reading for the preparing for class. This is a reading to help to understand about uh, base and quote currencies and bid and ask prices we're going to discuss about today. So let's just review the reading. So uh, we're going to understand about the concept of base and quote currency and bid and ask price. So base currency is going to be the one on the left, right? Usually it's going to be the dollar. So one dollar is 1,101. So this is the base currency. This is the quote. Do you understand quote in English? What's another meaning of quote in English? If I quote something, what does that mean? How do you say that in English? Yeah, what does it mean? Borrow somebody's work? Yes, you tell somebody something somebody else said, right? So here, quoting is like they're telling you. That's that kind of meaning here, right? Mm -hmm. So I ask you, I have one dollar. Please quote me how many won you can give me for one dollar. Okay. So then they will tell me or quote me. You get this one. Okay. This is the base one. So we also have the bid and ask prices. So we have first thing we have to do is distinguish the base and quote currency. So the base currency appears first and the quote currency appears second. Okay, so the first number in the sequence is always the market maker's bid quote. And the second number in the sequence is always the market maker's ask quote. So when we have a sequence here, we're going to have, does the bank have the same price? If you go to the bank, are they going to buy and sell at the same price? No. Oh, they have some, this is called a spread. The difference between this is called a spread. Okay, so uh, which is it, just common sense here. You go to the bank with one dollar. Which rate is the bank going to give you if you're buying one? And which rate is the bank going to give you if you're selling one? So which one is for buying one? You want to, you have one dollar and you want to buy one. Is the bank going to give you the higher number or the lower number? Who says higher number? The bank will give you the higher number of one. Who says lower number? Right? And then you're selling one to the bank. Is the bank going to buy, sorry, uh, at this number or this number? Okay. So the bank is not going to make a loss, right? So if you're selling one to the bank, the bank is going to ask you for 1,400 won to give you one dollar. Okay. Well, if you're on the other way around, you give a dollar to the bank, they're only going to give you 1,100. Do you understand? Right, so it means that this is their bid and this is their ask. So bid is, they will give you this one for your dollar. Okay? Do you understand bid in English? If I bid in an auction, I bid for something. Okay, it means I say I'm going to buy it. So the bank is going to buy this price. Okay? And then the bank asks me for 1,400 won to give me one dollar. So that's called the ask price. So we're just getting used to the vocabulary. Okay, can you understand? So we have the vocabulary just kind of meaning to the words, right? 
the bank is asking me for 1,400, okay, to get one dollar. The bank is bidding me, one, if they will give me 1,100 if I give them one dollar. Okay. So anyway, the first number here is the bid quote, and the second number is the ask quote. So the market maker, they are usually large banks, large global banks, who make the price. So when you view the market maker quote, you realize that the market maker bid is their price to buy one unit of the base currency. So the bid is the bank's price to buy a dollar. The ask price is their price to sell one unit of the base currency. Okay? So they're going to sell one dollar at this price. In either case, the market maker is buying or selling the base currency against the cost currency. Okay, so they, of course these bid and ask prices can change. <coughs> so you need basically if you're working for a company or you need to understand what these quotes mean. So we're going to look at two examples where first example would be euro and US dollar. The dollar is the quote currency, the euro is the base currency. The second example, US dollar, Japanese yen. Dollar is base currency and yen is quote currency. Okay. Uh, this is called the spread. The spread is the difference between the bid and the ask price. And this is the profit for the market maker. Obviously the market maker is not going to sell at the same price. Why would they do that? No reason. Okay, they're not but they're taking the time and effort to get the currency, exchange it, right? They have to get some profit. So, true or false? The ask price will always be higher than the bid price. Hands up who thinks true? False. Sometimes the bid price can be higher than the ask price. Okay, everybody has to put up their hand. What do you think? True? The ask price is always higher than the bid price? Put up your hand. False? The bid price can be higher than the ask price? I hope you don't work for a bank. <laughs> <laughs> Later. <laughs> if you make the bid price higher than the ask price, it means that you're, giving, you're losing money, right? Always lose, going to lose money, right? So the ask price has to be higher than the bid price. <coughs> so let's have a look at the example. So the euro is the base currency, the US dollar is the core currency. Okay, that's the normal situation because euro is stronger than the dollar. So here we can see, this is the information we'll see bank for the foreign exchange, right? Euro, US dollar, 125, 130. 125, market makers bid quote. 130, market makers ask quote. And the spread is 5 cents for one dollar, right? So the bank, especially if you go in as a tourist, the bank makes a nice spread. Usually, you know, 5 cents here is about 5 percent of the transaction. So my bid price is what I will buy one unit of the base currency for. So this is the bank banker, right? In this case, the euro. I will buy euros from anybody, and I will pay 125 for each euro. So bring me as many euros as you want, and I will give you a dollar 25 if you give me a euro. On the other hand, my ask price is what I will sell one unit of the currency for. So anybody comes to me. They give me one dollar thirty, then I'll give them a euro. Okay, so obviously I make the profit of the difference of these two. Okay, I'm uh, buying it off this guy for one dollar twenty-five. Okay, I buy one euro off this guy for one dollar twenty-five, and then I sell it to this guy for one, for one dollar thirty. Okay, so I made a profit of five cents. I have five cents left at the end. Then the general public, I want dollars. I need to look at the bid price. Here in the euro, US dollar, 
I need to look at the bid price, since this is the price at which the market maker is willing to sell me dollars for my euros. So for each euro I'll receive 125. I want euros, I'm going to buy each euro for $1.30. <coughs> So the second example is similar, just the US dollar is on the left, so US dollar is now the base currency. So when we can use this kind of vocabulary now when we talk about the exchange rate in the future, right? We can talk about, instead of saying the currency on the left, what would we say instead of the currency on the left? Base currency. What about the currency on the right? Quote currency. Okay? And then the the market maker is going to have two ones. Bid is what the bank will pay for the base currency. Ask okay, is what uh, the bank will ask for you to pay for one of the base currency. So in this case we have 87 and 90 for the yen. So which is the bid price? And which is the ask price? Right, so bid price, that's simple, right? Bid price is the first one, ask price is the second one. Okay? So, 87 bid price, ask price 90. So, do you have any question about this vocabulary part? No? Okay, then let's continue with the class. We'll see this. So we're doing this class is about understanding foreign exchange quotes. So we have large global banks such as Deutsche Bank, we saw was the top one, are involved in the interbank or wholesale FX market. Through their external clients, like banks, exporters, multinational companies. So they can act as a broker at the request of these clients to change the money. They can also act by themselves, trading to generate profits. Banks have some trading desks. You could work at the trading desk in the bank. The idea of the trading desk in the bank is to make profit for the bank. Now we had some scandal couple of years ago that the bank was manipulating interest rates. Okay? So some banks got into trouble because the, the interest rate is set by a group of different banks, some interbank lending interest rate. So the banks in that using that kind of trading, by, by fixing the interest rate, they were able to make profit. So banks do this kind of trading too. So they will take a pro, uh, position in the currency. So the bank thinks, oh, the, this year the euro is getting weaker, the dollar is getting stronger. Okay? Is the bank going to do nothing, just serve its clients and just say, oh, I think the dollar is going to get weaker. Or the dollar will get stronger, the euro will get weaker. Are they just going to serve their clients, give some advice to their clients? No, they also get involved themselves in the market. Okay? And banks can also influence the market in a certain way and get make a profit. So when they're dealing with the external clients, we call them a market maker. Do you understand the maker? Yes. They're creating, creating the market. So they're quoting prices and giving buying and selling currencies on the prices. <coughs> so there is a market just to define a market maker. The market maker has two primary activities. They have to provide the market with ongoing two-way quotes. Can, can the bank suddenly say, ah, oh, I'm not selling this currency today, but I'll start selling again tomorrow? No, right? It has to be ongoing, continuous. It has to be two-way quotes. They can't say, I just, oh, the, the uh, cream one is getting weaker, so I'm just selling the one. I'm not buying anyone. But they can't say that. Okay? They have to provide the two prices. This function provides the market with transparency. And they, they have to buy or sell the prices they quote. They can't quote this price 
and then say later, oh sorry, uh, I changed my mind, I'm not going to sell the currency. Okay? So they offer firm prices in the market, and this provides the market with liquidity. So we can trust them. Do you understand liquidity? What does liquidity mean? How fast can you what? How fast can you run? How fast can you change your money into? Into what? Into cash, right? Or liquidity also means there's a low, low uh, difference between the bid and the ask price in the market. If you want to sell a factory in the countryside in Korea, is that a liquid market? Are there a lot of buyers and sellers? If you want to sell a factory in the countryside in Korea, is, there, is that a liquid market? Yes. Can you sell the factory the next day and get the same price? Can you buy one day and sell the next day and get the same price? No. Can you buy US dollar one minute and sell the next minute and get around the same price? Yes, that's liquid, right? Liquid means there are a lot of buyers and sellers. The buying and price and the selling price is not very different. Okay? And uh, we can easily change our investment into cash. So if I buy the factory, can I easily change it into cash without losing money? No, no. no I want to lose a lot of money okay, I, if I want to sell tomorrow. So the, obviously the euro and US dollar is probably the most liquid market in the world. Okay? The most buyers and sellers in the world, euro and US dollar. So there's not going to be a very high difference between the buying and selling price. It goes out to four decimal places, right? We saw on the one that it goes out to four decimal places. So a very liquid market. So the market maker helps to make this stable situation. We can trust them that they have to sell at that price. And this makes the and they are always going to sell. So we have liquidity. So we already explained this. Uh, we have two uh, this is international standard organization designations. So we have the Euro US dollar. Our US dollar Japanese yen. The one on the left is the base, the one on the right is the quote. And we just explained about bid and ask also, right? This one is the bid. Here we can see we have four decimal places. Okay? Usually when we're top we're trading a lot of money. Okay, then we 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 don't want if we're trading one million dollars and we can't be losing five percent every time or ten percent, right? We have to use this this one, right? So obviously we have different market makers, and the market maker are in competition. The market maker with the lower spread will probably get more business than the one with the higher spread. So because of competition, they have to make the spread quite low. Here is the 0 0.0004 difference. Okay. So we have the the bid price on the left and the call price on the right. So discuss these questions with your partner. We have this GB, USD, these two prices. How much will you pay for one pound? Right? You're dealing with the market maker, you're the customer, talking to the bank. Okay? So discuss, answer, ask and answer these questions with your partner.
you have a calculator on your phone. Uh, 0.01390 And number 4 
E J 哈。So are you able to do those calculations? Yes. Do you have any question? Okay, so the bit as a spread. What else does spread mean in English? What's another re meaning for spread? Get. Get. Expand. You can spread butter on bread, right? Okay, something can spread out. Okay, so spread in here is like the difference. Okay, so the bid ask spread is basically the profit they make on a round transaction. Buying and selling an equal amount at the same price. So if I was to buy a dollar and then sell a dollar, I'm going to lose 300 won. Okay, the bank is going to earn 300 won. Okay, so I sell my dollar to the bank at 1,100. I buy my dollar back from the bank, I need to pay them 1400 to get it back. I lose this money, the bank earns this money. The last price is always higher than the bid. What they sell the base currency for is always higher than what they would buy the base currency at. So find out the, or calculate the spread on this one, right? So. If we look at this one, we can see that uh, we have 1.7921, 1.7929. So what is the dollar spread to the market maker on the transaction for 10 million pounds? So we just multiply, right? The ask one multiplied by 10 million. Bid one multiplied by 10 million equals, right? We, another way we can do that is just this one minus this one, and then multiply by 10 million. And then we get the spread like a commission. So even though this looks very small, there is just a very small difference. One, two, three, four decimal points difference, right? Somebody wants to change 10 million pounds, some big business, we make a $8,000, right? So the commission is not too bad in the end for the trading one. That's why if you if you go on to one of trading and you buy a currency, so you're immediately in the loss, right? Because the point is, if you sold that again, you buy it and then sell it again immediately, you're going to be buying and selling at a different price, so you lose money. So that's why you, you usually start in a loss, okay? So here, another example of the spread, okay? Ask price multiplied by this time we have uh, 1 million. Bid price multiplied by 1 million, subtract, the spread will be 1,000 Canadian dollars. So, it's very, it takes a long time every time to say 0 0.0003, 0 0.0002. So they found an easier way of vocabulary to say that. They call that pips or points. Okay, so pips stands for percentage in point. So the difference in the bid quote and ask quote usually lies in the fourth decimal place, or two pips. Okay? So uh, a pip for a four decimal place quote currency is actually 0 0.0001 of an exchange rate. So most currencies are quoted out to four decimal places. So instead of saying here 0 0.0002, we just say two pips. Okay. Is that easier? Which is easier to say 0 0.0002 or 2 pips? 2 pips, right? So it's just uh, vocabulary that we use. So, uh, bid, the bid and ask price can get wider or can get narrower, right? So discuss with your partner. Why do you think? In what situation will the bid and ask price get wider, and in what situation will it get smaller? 
What do you think causes this DNS price to get wider or smaller? Do you understand the spread gets bigger or smaller? So discuss with your partner. For example, the euro, the US dollar, is the spread going to be big or small? What about the, the US dollar and the Zimbabwean currency? Are they going to have a big spread or a small spread? So discuss with your partner. What kind of things affect the spread? Whether it's a big spread or a small spread? people trade the Zimbabwe currency and the dollar, right? That's one reason. Any other reason? Okay, so there's also volatility. Maybe it's one of the main ones. Do you understand volatility? Yes. Uncertainty? So, if the currency is changing a lot, or it's not changing much, right? Which one will have a higher spread? The volatile one, right? Why? Risk and uncertainty, right? The bank can lose money in this case. If it changes suddenly, the bid, you know, the bank, uh, this, this bank's ask price, and it could change now to 1,500 and 1,800. So then the bid price would be higher than the ask price and the bank could be losing money, right? If the change is very suddenly. So they don't want, in the case we have this volatility and risk, then they, they make bigger spread. The currency is quite stable, we don't have to make big spread. If we have more competition in the market maker, we're going to have, like again, more people, more buyers and sellers, more competition on the bank side. And if we're buying as a tourist, we have to pay a lot more than in the interbank market because we're just using small amounts of money, so the bank doesn't make that big a problem. Okay? 
so they try to make some minimum profit. So this is the wholesale market for the Great British Pound and US dollar. The pip spread is <coughs> just one, or one point three. In this case, they even put to five decimal places, right? In this, in the retail market, you can see uh, pip spread is four. This is for the banks, right? So you might see this in the Wanda, right? This is between the banks. Uh, tourist retail market. 144 to 161. The spread is 16 cents, or about 15 percent, right? So a really big difference for tourists. So if you can get this exchange rate, if you know somebody who works in the bank and the, with the companies, they might be able to get you a better exchange rate than the tourist one. So spread is different among different market makers. So market makers are in competition. So if you're, do you ever call the banks if you're going on holidays? You can call the bank or check their internet site. Check the different ones. Which has the best bid or ask price when you're getting currency? When you guys are buying green currency, what do you do? Did you buy it in Russia before you came here? We bought dollars. Bought dollars? And then came here in exchange. Do you check the different banks or just go to the bank? In Russia, we checked. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to ask your your uh, helper. What's the name of your helper? Some title. Mentor. Mentor. You can also check the homepage of the different banks in Korea. If your mentor shows you the homepage of three or four different banks around here. So, uh, which way is the currency moving? So. This idea of understanding the base and the full currency can help us quickly see whether the currency is getting stronger or weaker. Okay, so the base currency is the first one. The quotes here refer to one unit of the base currency. So whenever the bid and ask prices are moving up, so when this number is going up, then what's happening to this? The dollar is getting stronger or weaker? Stronger, right? If this number is going up, it means we can get more of this for one of these. Then this one is getting stronger. And then the opposite the other way around. Okay? When the bid and ask prices are moving down, this means the dollar is getting weaker. Okay? So now when we look at the exchange rate, if, I, if we look at the exchange rate, we should be able to calculate more or figure out more quickly. So try to figure out quickly what is happening here. Okay? So discuss with your part. This is October the 4th, this is October the 5th. Okay? It changed. The euro is the base currency. Right? The number is going up. What's happening? What's getting stronger? The base currency or the quote currency? Base currency. So, movement of foreign currency, movement of US dollar, stronger, weaker. Okay, so discuss the rest with your partner. Discuss the other three with your partner. Try to do it quickly, as quick as you can. So, don't look at your the answers, just look up here. Swiss 
Okay, so Kim Da Jong, the second one. What's happening to the foreign currency? British pound. Right, so we look at the, the base currency, right? Base currency, British pound. The number is getting lower. Base currency is getting weaker, right? So we can quickly say pound is weaker, dollar is stronger. Next one, moon, June, what? Next one. Say again. US dollar is strong. So the US dollar is, is uh, getting stronger, yes. And what about the Japanese yen? Also stronger? Okay, it's quite straightforward. The point is, once you know what happens with one currency, you just have the other one is the opposite, right? Park Hyun Ju, the last one. The US dollar is getting weaker, the number is going down, and the Swiss franc stronger. Okay, so do you think you can figure out more quickly what's happening now with this system? Yes. Whether the currencies are getting stronger or weaker? Wanda, a Wanda, right? FX3 is just another, similar to Wanda, you have different currency trading platforms. We're, just, we're using a Wanda because it has the option of using practice, practice trading, right? So, do you have any questions about using the Wanda? Are you using the Wanda trading? Are you making any money? Uh, how about you use the hmm? margin, margin call? Or what the use margin call? Or how about uh, I wonder you have a question about the margin. Yes. The margin means that $100,000 is your money and and they give you 1.9 million of the loan. So if you lose more than $100,000, they're going to uh, close your account, right? I want to use leverage system, but I don't know how to use the leverage system. You don't have to do anything to use it. You have $2 million. They already gave you a loan. So you just use all your $2 million for trading. So I think a common mistake is people don't use enough money. Okay? So check that uh, you can, you're using all your money, right? So in this case, we're just going to look at the live rates. So here we can see the currencies. Nowadays, right? So it's going to be like this, Euro, US dollar, okay? So we have the exchange rate here, with today's high and today's low. this at home, you can have a look around yourself on this yeah. website, okay? So, just follow the directions here, okay? Try to understand what currency, what price the market makers buying or selling. Observe the changes in the bid and ask quote. Ask yourself, is the currency getting stronger or is the currency getting weaker, okay? Uh, observe the different currency pairs here. Which pair is strengthening? Which pair is weakening? Okay. So here we can have a candlestick charting. Do you understand candlestick charting? Yes. 
So if we go to the <coughs> here into the streaming four X rays live. We can see some candlestick. Here they have some contests. Maybe you can also, if you like, you can enter this contest. If you want to enter the contest, be trader of the year. You can make a practice account on, on there and try to make yourself the tr best trader. So here we can see the candlesticks that we just looked at, green or red. So this is showing us, the candlestick is showing us that there's a big difference between the buying and selling price, a small difference between the buying and selling price. Okay, the spread. Candlestick is basically showing us the spread, right? So here we can see that in this case the candlestick is, I don't know if you can see that well, but the candlestick is very big, right? Buying price is 116, selling price is 114, so a big difference. But here there's a very small difference between buying and selling price. Okay? So we can see on the cha big changes there's a big difference between the buying and selling price. Okay? So <coughs> if the market is more volatile, the spread is going to be higher. The candlestick will be higher. Okay? So that is candlestick on the chart. So what's happening in, in this case? Euro, US, dollar. Can anybody tell me what's happening? What's been happening since this time? What's the trend? US dollar. Euro is getting stronger, so the number is going up. So we can do this for the chart as well. If we see the line going up, it means the base currency is getting stronger. Okay? And the core currency is getting weaker. The line is going down, base currency is getting weaker, and core currency is getting stronger. So it's just a quicker way to help us to understand uh, about those things. Okay, so then, does anybody have any question about uh, understanding the understanding the bids and quotes and so on? The market in the market. No? Okay, so then have a nice uh, choose of holiday. Enjoy your choose of holiday. Candlestick is just telling us that 